and welcome to episode one of the Neuroendocrine Cancer Nutrition Series. So in this first episode I'll be talking about something which is often quite misunderstood and that's the topic of pancreatic exocrine insufficiency and enzymes. So pancreatic exocrine insufficiency is basically something where the but the pancreas is not um, sufficiently producing enough enzymes to break down our food when we eat. So these are the lipases which break down fat, the proteases which break down protein and the amylases which break down carbohydrate. So this affects patients who have um, pancreatic tumours um, which can't be resected. In those where pancreatic tumours have been resected like the Whipple's operation where sufficient tissue has been removed and the enzymes are not produced anymore. Um, and then in things like cystic fibrosis and pancreatitis um, outside the neuroendocrine cancer field. However, um, we also know that somatostatin analogues can affect the pancreas as well and inhibit these enzymes that are produced. When we recently did a survey, over 84% of patients reported having something called steatorrhea, a fatty stool, after they started somatostatin analogues. And these fatty stools are yellowy or pale, greasy, oily stools that won't flush and that signifies the steatorrhea. When you have steatorrhea, it actually means that 90% of the pancreas function has been lost in making these enzymes. So it's the most severe um, effect. Um, and of course, some people don't have this severe effect. They may have a milder malabsorption of food over time. And this affects weight. So you may have a steady drop off in weight um, or become fat soluble deficient. Um, and these are the um, A, D, E and K fat soluble vitamins. Um, there are of course other causes of fat soluble vitamin um, deficiency and weight loss so we, that's not um, one of the tests which we would do to diagnose, it just helps build a picture of what's going on. If a doctor um, wants to run faecal elastase testing um, to test for pancreatic exocrine insufficiency, they often do this. Um, sometimes it's very obvious that someone's struggling um, after they've started somatostatin analogues. If they've got very visible steatorrhea all of a sudden, we know that it's probably, you know, uh, the analogue that's causing this. Um, and so we may see, um, with all these nutrients floating around in our small intestine, we may see um, slight increases in bacterial overgrowth rates. So this is something that I'll talk about in a different episode, but it's basically more nutrients feeding um, bacteria because they're not being broken down further up the gastrointestinal tract. Um, when we eat normally and have a normal pancreatic function, um, a normal pancreas actually releases just under a million enzymes. Um, so the lipases, the proteases and the amylases. Um, so if we don't have that anymore and it's been stopped or just reduced, we have to give an artificial pancreatic enzyme re replacement therapy, which we shorten to PERT. Um, so we give this to compensate what's missing. Um, most patients I see and most other dietitians see um, are prescribed too little or they're, they're taking too little um, because uh, they, they don't like taking them sometimes. Sometimes the, um, it's because it's expensive or um, embarrassing when you eat out. So there are lots of barriers to taking these things and they can be quite big um, and difficult to swallow for some people. Um, just to note that these enzymes are not human enzymes, they have been extracted from pigs. Most companies use enzymes from pigs. Um, if that's an issue to people, just um, be assured that the organisations representing uh, Jewish and Muslim communities have said that these treatments are acceptable to use um, because there is no other alternative. So what do we do with a the dose then? Um, so we have um, these capsules. 
there's different brands. The most common one is Creon, um, but there are Nutrizyme, Pancrex, um, other brands that we use as well. And so if we were looking at, for example, a Creon dosing, um, we'd look at starting someone on a 25,000 unit of lipase, which is one capsule, and that's with a snack or a nutritious drink. Um, we'd look at starting someone on two of these capsules for a main meal. That's normally not enough. Um, and um, once the patient's used to taking them, um, we'd have um, two for a snack and three for a main meal. Um, it's important to take with a first mouthful if you're having a meal um, and during consumption of a large meal as well, so halfway, especially if you're having a dessert too. Um, they don't last um, for a very long time, so it's important that you don't forget and take it after. Um, it can be um, opened up and mixed with acidic fluids or soft acidic foods um, and taken immediately if you can't manage to take the whole um, capsule but ideally if you can swallow capsules it needs to be taken whole because the um, enzymes can react with the um, oral mucosa um, and cause irritation and horrible um, soreness. Um, the other thing to note is that the enzymes will break down once they've gone through the stomach. They'll start to break down in the first part of the duodenum, so the bit where um, enzymes normally are received from the pancreas. Um, and at that point, it should be uh, more of an alkali environment than, so less acidic than basically in the stomach. Um, if it's acidic in that part of the body, the capsules won't break down. Um, so sometimes we find that we need to reduce acid with an acid reducing medication um, to help these enzymes work, but that would be after um, a dose increase. Um, if, still, if things still don't work, then, then perhaps try an acid reducing medication. Um, in terms of dosing, um, there is a maximum. P people often say that there isn't, but there is. Um, you can get damage to the bowel um, with very high doses. Um, so what they say, um, this is Creon specific advice, that you shouldn't exceed 2,500 lipase units per kilogram of body weight per meal. Um, or greater than 10,000 lipase units per kilogram of body weight per day. So if you're looking at someone who is 70 kilos, um, they can have 700,000 units of lipase per day, which means 28 capsules of a 25,000 dose. So if you're less than this, it's less capsules, and then you'd have to work it out um, and look at the, the advice for other brands of enzymes as well. So as I said before, we really want to avoid the irritation of the oral mucosa. Um, you shouldn't chew the enzymes, you shouldn't retain them in your mouth. It's a glass of water, swig it down, have your first mouthful of food. Um, the other things to be aware of that um, the enzymes um, contain purines. So if you're someone that gets gout or have renal problems um, or high uric acid uh, levels, then you really need to discuss taking enzymes with the doctor. Um, you can also have an allergy to these enzymes as well. Um, so if you're allergic to um, porcine origin products, so pork products, you really need to stay away from these enzymes. So is there an alternative? Unfortunately not. So there's vegetarian enzymes and um, I've heard pineapple enzymes and things like that which are sold online in health food shops. Um, can be quite expensive but there's no evidence to show that they actually um, work at all. Um, 
And the, the other question that we often get is, does alcohol affect these enzymes when you take them? So we know that alcohol affects our own pancreas. When we drink too much, it does disable our own enzymes and sometimes give a funny tummy. Um, and officially, no, alcohol does not affect these prescribed enzymes. Um, however, some patients um, have actually reported to me that it does affect the enzymes so um, you know just always try to reduce your alcohol anyway um, because of other treatments that you might be on but just be a bit careful and not overdoing it um, so what's the cons consequence of not treating this so obviously I, I said about weight loss um, and fat soluble vitamin deficiency neither of which are good. Um, but if left untreated uh, further down the line, you can have an increased risk of a cardiovascular event, so heart attack, strokes. Um, you can um, reduce your life expectancy, not net specific, but in general, having um, malnutrition and less vitamins uh, and a poor weight does affect life expectancy. Um, and it also reduces your bone mineral density, so you're more at risk of having fractures, and that's because of the vitamin D, which, um, which can be malabsorbed. Um, also, have, being lighter um, does affect, affect your um, bone mineral density as well. The question I also get asked is whether you should take a multivitamin um, because you're taking Creon, um, and because you're at risk of developing fat soluble vitamin deficiencies. Um, for me, I don't think it will um, prevent deficiency, just taking a normal multivitamin and mineral, um, and it probably won't treat either. Um, so if we are at high risk of developing these deficiencies, we really should be um, trying to get these tests done in hospitals. Um, so we know our own individual level. If you're already deficient and you take just a standard multivitamin and mineral supplement, it will not treat the deficiency. So really it is important um, to actually try and get these levels tested in the first place. So thank you for listening. See you next Wednesday um, for a new episode, episode two of the Neuroendocrine Cancer Nutrition Series.